Flesh and Blood is a trading card game where two heroes battle to the death. Each player chooses a hero, a weapon, and four pieces of equipment to take into the battle, as well as a constructed deck containing all the actions and reactions needed to win the fight. Flesh and Blood has three major limited formats, Constructed, Blitz, and Commoner. However, we'll take a look at those in a later video. In this video, however, we'll be focusing on the Ira Welcome deck. In this video, I'll show you how to obtain an Ira Welcome deck for free, the basic rules of the game, as well as how you can practice by yourself online. Now, I've also included timestamps in the description below so that if you need to find a part of this video, it should be made all the more easy. But let's move on, take a look at what the Ira Welcome deck actually is and how we can get one for ourselves. The Ira Welcome deck contains 30 cards, one weapon, and our hero Ira Crimson Haze. Comprising the 30 cards is three copies of 10 unique cards, making this the easiest and best pick up and play option for beginners of flesh and blood. These decks are given away at local game stores for free, so make sure to check at your local game store to see if you can pick up one for yourself and a friend. If your local game store doesn't have any of these left in stock, you can find a printable PDF of the deck from the official flesh and blood website. I'll leave a link down in the description so that you can find it for yourself. Simply download and print and you're ready to go. Now that you have your Ira Welcome deck, let's move on to the basic rules of the game. In this deck, you will be playing as Ira Crimson Haze, a ninja hero in the world of flesh and blood. At the bottom right of the card is the hero's health denoted by this green symbol. Ira has a starting health of 20. At the bottom left is her intellect shown by a blue symbol. A hero's intellect tells you your hand size for this hero. At the end of your turn, you will draw to your hand size or intellect value. Heroes, as well as other cards in the game have a text box which contains the effects for that card. Each hero in Flesh and Blood has a unique hero ability. Ira's hero ability is that the second attack each turn adds one attack strength to its attack value. Next, let's break down the anatomy of the rest of the cards in Flesh and Blood. Flesh and Blood cards are useful in that they can be used for multiple purposes within the game. Any individual card can typically be used to attack, defend, or can be pitched to gain resources to pay the cost of other cards. Let's take a look at the card Torrent of Tempo as an example. The bottom left of the card shows the card's attack value denoted by the yellow attack symbol, and the bottom right shows the card's defense value next to the gray defense icon. As we can see, Torrent of Tempo attacks for five, and defends for three. The top right of the card shows the number of resources needed to play the card. Torrent of Tempo costs one resource to play. Finally, the socketed resource symbols at the top left of the card show how many resources are gained when this card is pitched to pay the cost of another card. As we can see on Torrent of Tempo, it has one socketed resource symbol, meaning it generates one resource when pitched. As a handy indicator, each card also has a color strip along the top showing the amount of resources the card can generate. A single socketed resource always has a red color strip, two socketed resources has a yellow color strip, and three socketed resources always has a blue color strip. At the bottom of the card, we can see the card type. The Ira Welcome deck contains attack actions, attack reactions, and defense reactions. Attack actions are attacks that our hero will perform in an attempt to deal damage to their opponent. Attack reactions are cards that can be played in order to make an attack stronger, and defense reactions are cards that can be used to increase our overall defense. Like hero cards, each card also has a text box, typically containing additional effects that occur when playing the card. Let's first take a look at the game board, where we will see some of these card effects in action. The game of Flesh and Blood is played in zones consisting of three T-shapes. The leftmost four zones are the hero's equipment slots. The Ira Welcome deck does not use equipment, and so we will be revisiting these zones in a future video. The center T-shape consists of your hero card zone, two weapon slots, and an arsenal zone behind your hero. At the end of your turn, if you have any cards left in your hand, you can place one in your arsenal before drawing up to your hand size. We will explore the unique conditions of the arsenal zone in a later chapter in this video. The rightmost T-shape contains your deck of cards, your graveyard, your banish zone, and your pitch zone. Any action cards you play during your turn are placed in the graveyard. The exception to this is your hero's weapon, which returns to the weapon zone, acting as a reusable attack that your hero can use. Any cards in your pitch zone at the end of your turn are placed on the bottom of your deck in any order. We will see these in action later in this video. Finally, at the top of the board, we have the combat chain. This is where the action takes place in a game of flesh and blood. At the start of your turn, your hero gains an action point, which your hero can use to play an action card. 
If the action card has the keyword go again, this replenishes your action point, allowing your hero to perform another action. When a hero first attacks, it opens the combat chain and creates the first chain link. If the attack has go again and a hero attacks a second time, this creates a second chain link and so on. This is important as some cards have beneficial effects depending on which chain link they are played on. For example, Flying Kick gains two to its attack value if it is played as the third or higher chain link. Let's take a look at an individual attack and see how this plays out in a game of flesh and blood. At the beginning of your turn, you have the following cards in hand. We will play the card Bittering Thorns from our hand, opening the combat chain and creating the first chain link. Bittering Thorns attacks for three damage and has the card text, if Bittering Thorns hits, your next attack this turn gains plus one attack, go again. However, this card costs one resource to play, and so we will pitch our blue head jab to generate three resources. One resource will be used to pay Bittering Thorn's cost, leaving two resources for us to use later in the turn. Note that you can also pitch additional cards later in the turn if you run out of resources, and any unspent resources at the end of your turn are lost. So now that we have played Bittering Thorns and paid its resource cost, our opponents can choose any number of action cards to defend with. Our opponent decides to defend all three damage with a red flying kick, which has a defense value of three, covering all of our attack. It is important to note here that defending with a card is free, so our opponent does not have to pay flying kicks to resource cost. Finally, since flying kick is being used to defend rather than being played, its card text does not occur. Now that we have attacked and our opponent has defended, we enter the reaction window. In this window, we can play attack and defense reactions to add buffs to our attacks and defense respectively. In our example, we decide to play lunging press as an attack reaction. This buffs our attacks value by one. Next, our opponent plays the defense reaction springboard somersault. This defends for two. Note that if you decide not to play an attack reaction, your opponent can still play a defense reaction. The cycle of attack and defense reactions then occur until both players are finished and we move on to calculate damage. To calculate damage, simply calculate the final attack and defense values of the chain link and subtract the defense from the attack to calculate damage. Any attack value left over after the subtraction is dealt as damage to the defending hero. In our example, our total attack is four and our opponent's total defense is five. This means the attack is fully blocked and no damage is dealt. Since Bittering Thorns has go again, we regain our action point and can attack again, creating a second chain link. Once we have finished attacking and we are ready to end our turn, we move to the end of turn step. In this step, if we have any cards left in our hand, we can choose one to place face down in our arsenal. This is essentially banking a card for your next turn. The arsenal is essentially an extra card we have at our disposal, however this benefit does come with two specific restrictions. Any cards placed in the arsenal zone must be played. This means that it cannot be used to pitch for resources, and it cannot be used as a defending card. Note that this only applies to non-defense reaction cards, Defense reactions can be played from Arsenal and Springboard Somersault even rewards you with extra defense for doing so. Once we have decided whether or not to place a card in Arsenal, we move on to cleanup. All weapons are returned to the weapon zone, all cards in the combat chain are placed in the graveyard, and all cards in the pitch zone are placed on the bottom of your deck in any order. We then draw cards until we reach our hand size, denoted by our hero's intellect value. It then becomes our opponent's turn, and we are now the defending player. This continues until a hero can successfully reduce their opponent's life total to zero. In the final section of this video, we will take a look at where you can play Flesh and Blood, and even how you can practice by yourself with a full game at home. First and foremost, the best place to play Flesh and Blood is at your local game store. Legend Story Studios encourages stores to hold beginner events where all players play using the Ira Welcome deck and can be the perfect time to play the game in person. To find one of these events, simply visit the official Flesh and Blood website and use their handy event locator to see if any welcome events are scheduled near you. If you cannot find any welcome events or you do not have a local game store near you that hosts Flesh and Blood, you can always play in person with a friend at the kitchen table. Whilst the game is best played in person in the Flesh and Blood, if you are looking to practice by yourself, you can use the fantastic website Felt Table, which allows you to play Flesh and Blood in your browser for free. 
On the current version of Feltable, you can select Flesh and Blood, Quick Match, and then select the Ira Welcome deck from the available list of heroes. Select the deck as both Player 1 and Player 2, and you're ready to play the Flesh and Blood introductory experience. This also has the added benefit of stepping you through each individual turn step and performs all damage calculations for you. As a new player, this is a great way to learn how a turn works and to get a feel for the game. Another great thing about Feltable is that you can play using your real cards. If you select the hybrid game mode, you can play using real cards and input your actions into the game. This is a fantastic way of cementing the turn order into your mind and gets you comfortable managing the turn steps on your own. Finally, you can also play Flesh and Blood via Discord using a webcam. This game is extremely webcam friendly and there are multiple Discords that host events. At the time of recording this video, Discords such as the Flesh and Blood TCG community, the Kitchen Table and our own Flesh and Blood Ireland regularly have people playing over webcam. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that this has helped you begin your flesh and blood journey. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with more beginner videos. I'm planning on making an entire beginner series, so definitely subscribe if you want to stay up to date. And if you want to contact me directly in the YouTube comment section isn't your thing, I'm very active over on Twitter talking about all things flesh and blood. Anyways, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you guys next time.